Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the plot tour at the end of May on what is almost a glorious summer day. And as usual, the rhubarb bed is the place to start, and the uh, early rhubarb has collapsed somewhat. We've also popped in some marigolds, only two of six still survive, having been munched away by slugs or snails, possibly. So the nautia is coming into flower, but it's actually showing, showing some signs of uh, mildew, which is a good indication of uh, how dry it has been. So the strawberries have been strawed. So they've been lifted up and there's a fair bit of fruit on them. Nothing yet to harvest, but it's not far off. And the bean wigwams are in. We've got the first eight canes all planted up here. We've just uh, chopped down the cover crop in this area and these are going to be planted soon so we have a succession. And here we are with the netted uh, blackcurrants and gooseberries. And there's plenty of uh, fruit developing there. In fact the gooseberries look like they're almost finished. And the nigella has uh, come out, started to flower. So the carrot bath, it's been successionally sown as well, so we've got some shorter ones here and some taller ones there. They look good. So the uh, Chilean guava and the uh, blueberries have gone into, uh, into the bath, even though they're in their pots. I have potted them up, but um, they're not looking the healthiest. I am a little concerned that uh, the ericaceous compost that um, I originally got, which um, was in this bath and uh, two, uh, the early two blueberries died. Mm. And this one, look at this poor thing. Yeah, that one's a goner. That's the third and final of the three originals from a couple of years ago. That's pegged out. So I don't know if it was the ericaceous compost. Maybe didn't water it enough, I don't know. So here we are with the potato pots, all 10 of them. We've got five Jazzy, which is a sick and early variety. And they went in first. And the sh slightly the shorter ones here are the Sarpo Mira main crop. They're all looking good. So this is the French bean bed. This half here hasn't been done yet. And that half certainly has. We've got uh, plenty of signs of uh, bean life there. This is the courgette bed. We planted two under the, uh, the bell cloches and this one we've already selected the one we're keeping. And actually, <laughs> it turns out that Mrs. Soil and Toil has selected this one as well. Uh, see, they seem to be going okay. And this is our fallow bed. It's got um, sort of carrots that are about to flower and beetroot that's about to flower. And so, so we've got various sort of wheat and buckwheat and various odds and sods there. Lots of uh, biology going on underneath. And the shallots, they're looking very good. Lots of um, splitting going on there. Onions are thickening up nicely, a little bit twisty. They have been um, uh, having to contend with a fair bit of wind, so it's possibly that rather than a, a virus or anything. So we have got some marigolds in here that haven't been had by slugs. And little brassicas under those uh, trifle bowls. Tomatoes have... Uh, mm, Various reasons for them not looking too good. They've just gone in, so possible transplant shock. The original Wix compost that they went into, we suspect, hasn't been too good. And of course the weather, as we we got promises of no late, uh, lower than 10 degrees centigrade at night. It's been sixes and sevens, so I don't think they've been too happy about that, which is why we haven't put out our peppers yet. And here we are with our uh, lettuces and... Uh, 
our lovely cabbages which seem to be doing okay so far peach peregrine just doing his uh, usual thing of growing far too much now, this little sort of foxglove here that I thought was one that would flower next year it looks like it was it's the one from last year just having a second flush for some reason our cherry bed looking quite nice we do have one cherry so big excitement there and we've got the lilies going at the back there got a pink and a salvia and salmon trying to pack a lot into that bed so at the back here i've sort of made another bug hotel which has um, not had too many customers we've got a couple of uh, hardy fuchsias that uh, are surviving there whether they'll survive against the invasion of bindweed or not, I don't know. And we got some two tomatoes here that, once they get going, do rather like it in front of the shed. And we've got a single sunflower. That one should be growing up into something rather large. And salvias are putting on quite a nice display at the moment. Oh, Neighbour's dog's getting a bit annoyed. So a couple of bishop dahlias. Hopefully they'll come to something. They've been here for a few years and struggled pretty much everywhere I've put them. And Waldo's got lots of fruits and actually lots of new growth for next year. always rather like that vista. So I was hoping that I'd be able to take the net off of the pond for this video but the um, the water lilies have not opened up yet and we have to protect them against the foxes who do rather like just nipping off the tops of the buds. So everything's looking quite pretty here. I just moved this uh, which is actually a blue salvia I just moved it from behind the pluot here. I didn't really anticipate how much of a shade <laughs> block, the sun blocker that uh, pluot would be. And we've got uh, Gertrude Jekyll. Lots of buds on, on her. Clematis is coming on quite nicely. So raspberries, they've, they, they're doing okay, but they would probably rather uh, if they had a little bit more rain. And strawberries, they really need to be, well these, these ones are probably doing better in terms of fruit growth than the, the others. They uh, probably should be netted soon. And the plum trees, all five of them, in various states of death and absolutely no fruits on them at all. Sweet corn, um, we've got the first uh, eight of uh, 16. They're in underneath these uh, bell cloches and they've been reduced down to one. We had about three in originally, we just picked the strongest one. These peas have uh, been twice sown and twice had by um, mice. Oh, hello, what's that? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, scarlet lily beetle. Have to deal with that at some point. Uh, they've been fairly um, free of them so far. Unless it's just my eyesight been missing them. So parsnips, they have all come very nicely. All from the first sowing this time, not the third sowing from last year. And these tomatoes, much like the others, a little bit of a shock there for them going in. I'm sure they'll bounce back. Now we've got peas down the middle here. We've got beetroot that could do with harvesting. We've got some turnips there. There's some spring onions over here. And the garlic. 
not too bad with the garlic. There hasn't been that many that look like they might have been got by white rot. So far, so good. So in terms of number of leaves, they're getting up towards the right number that would suggest that they're ready, ready for harvest. So the espalier fruit trees, they've got that that uh, to get to that stage now where they've, they've set fruit and it's all coming along and they're starting to look a little bit sick. So we'll see how they go. Not as sick as this poor Victoria plum. It's really curled up with aphids. And it had a really good start as well. It, it had lots of blossom. In fact, it's got some blossom now. It's probably desperate to set some fruit that won't fall off because this is the kind of fruit we've had. So it's basically set some and then it's just dying off. But the others, the, plum, the pear tree, damson, gauge around here, seem okay. Although I'm never too happy with the pear tree. It's uh, got a lot of uh, aphid attack. Sweet peas mixed in with uh, another Waldo. In fact, I've uh, maybe underestimated how fast the sweet peas will grow. I hope uh, the Waldo will forgive me. Oh, well, we've got um, butternut squash, one on either side. The potential of growing up this netted um, post here. They very rarely do. And more sweet peas over here. And this lime marmalade seems to have settled in, although it is being overwhelmed somewhat by this rather large Fulton Strawberry Surprise rhubarb, which is cropping very nicely this year. And we've got some spare strawberries down here with some borage. We've just let seed, uh, self-seed from last year. And that seems to be quite happy. Oh, and another squash. This is a crown prince we fopped in. We've grown the crown prince before in our first year and we got some as, as big as 13 pounds and we didn't eat any of them. <laughs> we just gave them away or let them rot. So this time we're absolutely determined because we've heard so many good things about how tasty they are. We're going to have one, hopefully, this year. And we've got some spare sarpomera. We've uh, just popped in the ground. Not really been successful for growing potatoes in the ground before, but so we'll see how those go. And that is it at the end of May. I hope everybody's keeping well and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.